good afternoon dear students let us continue with the raw materials that are required for fermentation medium or production medium till now we have discussed what are the I, uh, characteristics of an ideal uh, production medium then what are the various uh, classes of uh, production uh, raw materials what are the various classes of raw materials that are used in production medium okay so what are those number one carbohydrate material and carbohydrate materials are classified into three categories saccharine material that we have discussed yesterday number two starchy materials that also we have discussed and number three cellulosic so let us discuss cellulosic material as a source of carbohydrate in the raw materials right so what are cellulosic materials <coughs> excuse me they are complex carbohydrate materials made up of cellulose of course as the name suggests cellulosic materials are made up of cellulose which is a complex carbohydrate or it is a <coughs> homopolysaccharide cellulose is made up of repeating units of beta d glucose that are linked to each other by beta 14 glycosidic linkage as you can see in the structure okay so beta d glucose molecules repeating units of beta d glucose molecules joined to each other by beta 14 glycosidic linkage are the uh, <coughs> cellulose represent the cellulose so you can see here this is the beta 14 glycosidic linkage right now sulfite based liquor and wood molasses are the best example of cellulosic materials that are used in production medium sulfite based liquor and wood molasses are the two best cellulosic materials that are used as raw materials in production medium let us discuss the first one that is sulfite based liquor okay wood is subjected to di when wood is subjected to dilution with the help of calcium bisulfite under heat and pressure to manufacture paper pulp the spent liquid that remains behind at the end of this digestion process is called as sulfite waste liquor okay so in the manufacturing of paper pulp wood is digested with the help of calcium bisulfite under heat and pressure so during the paper pulp manufacturing the a spent liquid the waste liquid that remains behind at the end of the digestion process at the end of digestion of wood is called as sulfite waste liquor okay now sulfite waste liquor contains 10 to 20% of solids 20 uh, sorry sulfite waste liquor contains 10 to 12% of solids out of these 20% are sugars okay so 20% of the total solids of sulfite waste liquor are sugars right that means actually they contain 2% sugar molecules in sugar in them so sulfite waste liquor contains both hexose sugars as well as pentose sugars so what are the different hexoses that are present in sulfite waste liquor glucose d glucose d uh, galactose d manose and what are the pentoses arabinose uh, sorry d xylose and l arabinose are the pentoses that are present in sulfite waste liquor now the amount of sugar that is present in sulfite waste liquor varies depending upon the composition of liquor okay so the relative amount of sugar present in sulfite waste liquor depends upon the chemical composition of the liquor and which varies according to the variety of wood that is used for paper pulp making okay so the average composition of sulfite waste liquor is given in this table and it is depending upon the wood paper pulp when paper pulp is manufactured for using spruce wood what are the comp uh, components that are found in sulfite waste liquor are given in this from spruce wood okay so it contains lignosulfuric acid 43% weight by volume then hemilignin incompletely hydrolyzed some hemicellulose and uronic acid 7% total monosaccharides are 20% which are divided into glucose xylo d glucose d xylose and d mannose galactose arabinose right apart from that 
Acetic acid is also present. Aldonic acid and other compounds are also present. So this is an average composition of sulphite waste liquor obtained from spruce wood. Sulphite waste liquor can be employed in a dilute fermentation medium in some industries. Okay. So sulphite waste liquor is used as a source of carbon in some of the fermentation medium. For example, production of ethanol using Saccharomyces cerevisiae. We can use a, a sulphite waste liquor as a source of carbohydrate. Okay. So sulphite waste liquor is used in the production, can be used in the production of ethanol using Saccharomyces cerevisiae or can be used in the production of animal feed, single cell protein using Torula utilis. Okay. So these are the applications or uses of sulphite waste liquor. Now, sulphide based liquor cannot be used directly because it contains sulfur dioxide. And sulfur dioxide present in sulphide based liquor is a strong oxidizing agent and it is toxic to microorganisms. Okay. So, presence of sulfur dioxide in sulphide based liquor is toxic and it is a strong oxidizing agent. So, it is objectionable. Hence, it is necessary to remove the sulfur dioxide. How it is removed? Either by steam stripping uh, or by precipitation with lime. So SO2 can be removed. Sulfur dioxide present in sulphite waste liquor can be removed by steam stripping or precipitation with lime. In case of steam stripping, steam is injected into sulphite waste liquor. Okay, steam is forced or steam is injected inside sulphite waste liquor so that sulfur dioxide present in it is removed in the form of gas or vapors. Okay, so this is how sulphite waste liquor is used for, uh, used as a raw material or as a source of carbohydrate in fermentation industries. The second category of cellulosic material is wood molasses. Okay, acid hydrolysis of wood cellulose. Okay. Similar, uh, similar sugars or sugars similar to that present in sulphite waste liquor are also obtained by acid hydrolysis of wood cellulose. Okay. So, acid hydrolysis of wood cellulose can form sugar similar to that present in sulphite waste liquor and acid hydrolysis of wood cellulose produces 65 to 85 percent of fermentable sugars. Okay. Say for example, sawdust. Sawdust that is treated with 0.5% sulfuric acid, okay, sawdust when treated with 0.5% sulfuric acid yields a syrup containing 4 to 5% of reducing sugar that is glucose and other pentoses with an overall yield of 45 to 55%. This syrup upon concentration gives wood molasses, okay. So, sawdust treated with sulfuric acid. Uh, to get a syrup containing reducing sugars which upon concentration gives wood molasses, right. The percentage of fermentable sugars present in wood molasses depends upon the type of wood that is used. So, if you look at the average co chemical composition of wood molasses, it is as follows, okay. So, what does it contain? Solids. Total solids are 52 to 60 percent uh, by weight. Reducing sugars like glucose 48 to 50 percent. Other carbohydrates are 0.5 to 1.5 percent. Non-carbohydrate organic compounds 6 to 8 percent. Volatile organic acids 1 to 2 percent by weight. Nitrogen 0 0.065 percent by weight and ash 2 to 3 percent by weight. So this is an average chemical composition of wood molasses. What is the use? Where it is used? Wood molasses is commonly used in the production of single cell protein as well as for cultivation of yeast and mushrooms. Okay. So, wood molasses is used as a raw material, as a source of carbohydrate in the production of single cell protein as well as for the cultivation of yeast and mushrooms. Now, rice straw, the waste of rice plants. And other related agriculture materials can also serve as a good source of cellulose, right? So, rice straw, other related agricultural waste materials serve as good source of cellulose. Rice straw can be used for the production of silage for animals as well as for single cell 
protein. So rice straw can also be used as a cellulosic material. Now the next category of raw material. The first category is carbohydrate material divided into saccharine material, starchy material and cellulosic material that we have discussed. The second category of raw materials is hydrocarbons and vegetable oils. Okay, let us discuss about hydrocarbons. Usually a mixture of hydrocarbon compounds, okay, not a single, but a mixture of hydrocarbon compounds is used as fermentation substrate or as a substrate for, uh, for a fermentation medium. This uh, raw material that is hydrocarbon is a cheap raw material, but the purified form of hydrocarbons or the purified fractions of hydrocarbons are very expensive. Now, hydrocarbon substrate like gas oil and N-paraffin are used for single cell protein production. Most of the time, we use a mixture of carbohydrate uh, as a fermentation medium. This raw material is cheap, but if you are using purified hydrocarbons, they are expensive. Now, where are, uh, what are the different hydrocarbon compounds that are used as raw material? Gas oil and N-paraffin. And they are used for single cell protein production number one number two they are used for production of biomass or growing microorganism on large scale growing the yeast so biomass production of candida lipolytica candida tropicalis and other candida species like atcc 2340 etc okay so hydrocarbon substrate like gas oil and n paraffin are used for single cell protein production for biomass production of candida species right uh, so, this is how hydrocarbons are used. The second category, uh, the next is vegetable oils. Vegetable oils are obtained by de-oiling of oil seeds. Okay. Oil seeds are subjected to de-oiling. That is oil is extracted from oil seeds and that oil is called as vegetable oil. The vegetable oil is grouped into three categories depending upon their degree of unsaturation. Number one, oleic acid or non-drying type, saturated. Okay, so number one, first category of vegetable oil is oleic. Number two, linoleic and number three, linolenic oils. So oleic oils are non-drying type, say for example, groundnut oil, okay, olive oil. Second category is linolenic, or, uh, uh, it should be linoleic. Or semi-drying type of oil. Linoleic or semi-drying type of oil. For example, maize oil, sunflower oil, cotton seed oil, etc. Then the third category depending upon unsaturation is linolenic or drying type of oil. Example, linseed oil, soybean oil. Okay. Oils may undergo drying if exposed to atmosphere due to oxidation of unsaturated components okay why uh, oils can undergo drying because of when they are exposed to atmosphere due to oxidation they may undergo drying oxidation of unsaturated components present in oil okay undergo drying if exposed to atmosphere now commercial vegetable oils like maize oil soybean oil can be used along with surface active agents as anti-foam agents, okay? Or when they are used alone, they can serve as a nutrition of carbon. And they, they can serve as a source of carbon nutrition, right? So hydrocarbons, a mixture of hydrocarbons are used, like N-paraffin, or we can use, right? Or gas oil, right? Vegetable oils like oleic acid, linoleic acid, and linolenic acid can be used as a source of raw materials. But vegetable oils generally serve as good anti-foam agents when they are used along with surface active agents. But when they are used alone, they can also serve as a source of nutrition, particularly as a source of carbon. So that is all about the second category of raw material that is hydrocarbons and vegetable oils. In the next class, we will discuss about nitrogenous materials and distillers soluble. Okay, so we will stop here for today's class.